Welcome to the Kevin Shortell Show, where you will learn how to combine the best real estate investment techniques with the best of real estate note techniques. Having delivered over 200 live presentations in the past 10 years, Kevin is a highly skilled instructor and is well known in the industry for his deep level of knowledge on market conditions and trends. Through interviews and solo casts, you will learn, be entertained, and inspired to take your investing to the next level. Here is your host, Noteworthy's 2019 Note Educator of the Year Award winner, Kevin Shortell. Hey everybody, Kevin Shortell here, and once again, thank you for listening to the show, and please go ahead and subscribe. The more subscribers that I have, the more shows that I can do, because we attract sponsors and everything else, so I really do appreciate that. So please, share this with a friend, especially if you're a you know, a member of a meetup group or a real estate investment club, anything like that, I do appreciate it. And I look forward to creating more and more of these podcasts under the new format and hope you enjoy the new format. This is the only second one doing the new format. And I think people are going to really respond to it because it's going to have a little bit of everything. So as we grow, we'll continue to utilize this format and possibly even expand upon it. And who knows, maybe we'll end up doing an hour long show or more and splitting it up into a couple. So a lot of potential with this forum. I do enjoy doing it. And once again, if you have any guests that you would like for me to interview, I'd love to know about it. So my friend David Frenicky, he's going to talk about a technique that he's utilized where I think you'll be interested in this too. There's a lot of short-term notes available in the performing world right now, right? They've been seasoned very, very long. They've got maybe three years of payments left. And a lot of people pass those up because they just feel there's not enough money in them. What are you going to do with them? Just kind of wait out the three years. Well, first of all, hey, if you can place money somewhere safe on a property that's backed about three times more than what you have in it, and you're making a double digit return, I think that's pretty darn good versus letting it just sit somewhere in a savings account making nothing for you. But what he did was he started to look at a bunch of these little short termers that he had purchased. And he said, you know what, I need to raise a little bit of capital because I'm seeing some good opportunities now. And he reached out to these borrowers and made them an offer to pay off their loan. And if they paid it off in full, then he would allow them a discount. Now, of course, that discount still made him a profit. So he raised a good bit of capital just by utilizing that little technique. Now, that is one area in the business where purchasing and looking at the unpaid balance comes into play. Because you hear me talk all the time, for example, about when you're looking at buying notes, performing, non-performing, anything, you look at risk first. And we look at the investment to value ratio, right? And then we look at yield. What is our return in the world of non-performers? What is our potential profits? You know, that sort of thing. So what's our rate of return and what is our potential profit is what you're looking at after risk. Risk first, then we look at the reward in terms of return on investment or potential return on investment. So once you've done that, the investment to UPB isn't as important as risk. But if you are buying shorter term loans, then you want to look at that if you want to employ this technique of offering them an early payoff. You don't have to do that. You can enjoy the income. A lot of people, even with three years left, they don't typically pay it off in full. They just go ahead and say, well, I'll just keep paying every single month and you make a nice return on that. But you'll see when we do David interview as well. So David and I got together earlier in the week and recorded that one together, the interview style that you're familiar with. And of course, we've got another segment of Duly Noted coming up. So we're going to start with the Duly Noted. We will then hear from David. So let's get to it. All right, everybody. So on this particular duly noted segment, I want to talk about something that I've been emphasizing since I wrote my last book, which was over a year ago now. And that is that the strongest real estate investors moving forward are going to combine the best of real estate investment techniques with the best of note techniques. And that's becoming more predominant even now, and especially with the economic lockdown and everything else that we're in right now, real estate has been in flux. And actually, there's been some confusing numbers. Uh, We haven't seen drastic drops and that sort of thing yet, but remember, the data always comes in months later. So we really don't know the extent of it. Everybody expects, of course, because we do know that there's over 4 million people that have foreload and they're not making mortgage payments, that sort of thing. But We haven't seen a drop too much on property values. In fact, one of the most interesting stats I've read recently is that 
the medium home price year to year in April actually went up about 7%, something uh, like that. But remember, median is different. And what happened in those numbers, why the medium went up, is because the lower price band property sales have dropped off drastically. And that's really what happened. So the top end in real estate, we haven't seen much of a big change yet. Now, again, numbers may come out in a month or so that that change the picture of that. But we have already seen in the data a big drop in the not only home sales, but really at the lower end of the home sales. So that's what we're facing here. So for us, though, as real estate investors who can combine, again, real estate with real estate nodes, that creates opportunity for us. The opportunity, for example, that I've recently went through with a client of mine, and I think you're going to see more of these because it's a great strategy. The technique was very simple. An investor in Texas bought a property using borrowed funds. Now, the borrowed funds could be private loan, whatever. In his case, it's a small community bank. So he uses a combination of small community bank loan as well as some of his own cash to buy properties. Okay, so he buys real estate. He's just wearing his real estate investor hat, if you will. He buys the real estate at a discount, right? Fixes it up and then sells it. But again, financing today is very difficult because of all the loans that are going bad and everything else, you can't get those non-conforming loans and non-qualified mortgages anymore. You have to put 20% down again. So lending is tightened up considerably and expect that to continue uh, probably through the rest of the year at least. So if it's difficult to get financing, if it's difficult, or if we're also seeing sales drop off on lower price band properties, this technique is perfect because you can buy those properties inexpensively, combination, again, borrowed money, your own money, buy the house, fix it up. When you go to sell it, don't rely upon bank financing. It's just not there for most people buying $120,000 homes and less. It's just not there unless they have 20% down and good credit. But again, think of where we are credit-wise right now. Do you think people are taking advantage of not paying their credit card debt, not paying a rent, that sort of thing? They are. That's going to catch up. And believe me, that's going to affect people's credit, whether they think that's going to be the case or not. It will catch up to them at some point in time. So when you look at the bigger picture of things, the best way to sell it and the greatest technique that we can use is to sell it with seller financing. So the technique there is to sell it, get a 5 or 10%, hopefully 10% down payment, and then create a seller finance note. That seller finance note will wrap around underlying loans. Okay, the borrowed money, the money that this person borrowed from a local community bank to buy this property. Now, that is a temporary situation, selling it on a wraparound. The next step then is to take off the real estate investor hat. You've got the note investor hat on now. You created a note. You wanted to create a note of good quality because if you are going to turn around and sell that note, you want to have a good quality note because you won't have to season it as much. Okay, so how do we do that? We make it Dodd-Frank compliant and everything else, right? So we verify income, we check the credit, we meet all of the obligations that we need to meet under seller financing. So the note investor part does that. Then also you take that wraparound note and sell it. Now, if you've structured it the right way, and if you bought correctly, right, we're still buying at discounted prices there, you can sell that note out of the proceeds of the sale of that note you pay off the underlying loan, in this case, the local community bank loan. Great technique, very simple technique. Obviously, the hard work is initially as a real estate investor, find deeply discounted properties, buy it, get the financing in place, and then rehab it as normal, sell a property using a wraparound note, do it with good quality sellable terms. By sellable terms, it would make sense, obviously, to find out what could you sell that note for if you created it in a certain way with specific borrowers. And of course, you can do that. You market that note and sell that note. Out of the proceeds of the note sale, you pay off the underlying loan and the rest is all your profit. So it's a great technique and you're going to see more and more of those notes on the open marketplace. I've already seen quite a number of them on the paper stack trading platform, for example, but it makes sense because in this marketplace, that's a great technique. Are those notes purchasable? Are they safe? Absolutely. 
You just want to make sure that the underlying loan is going to be paid off in the proceeds. So when that is handled at a closing, it doesn't go to the person who sold the note and say, hey, don't forget to pay off the underlying bank loan. It's all handled within the closing and you'll see a payoff letter and everything works out uh, just great. So whether you're just buying those wraparound notes, that's one thing that you can do. Or if you utilize that whole technique in today's marketplace, I think you'll find it to be a very profitable thing to do. So once again, just to wrap it up, if you will, <laughs> we can buy a property, get a loan on it, fix it up, sell it, make sure your numbers make sense, sell it with seller financing on called what's a wraparound mortgage as a temporary fix, and then you sell that note and pay off the underlying loan in the process. Great technique. I want it duly noted. The best investors are going to be doing techniques like that, combining real estate, with real estate notes. I've got my good friend Dave Franicki on and David, like a lot of investors who own notes and portfolios and things like that, you go through, well, times where you want to raise capital, times where you want to liquidate assets, reinvest, etc. And I was talking with David recently and he's got a great technique that is probably very underutilized, but once you hear it, you're kind of like, Ugh. That makes complete sense. So I think you'll really enjoy this for those of you who have a portfolio of notes and you're looking to get some capital. So Dave, thanks for being on, my friend. Thank you, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Just fine. Good to see you. Yes. So give us a little background on this because I'm sure there's other investors in your same situation and I think they'll have a little aha moment. So kind of tell us what brought you to this idea and jump right in. Okay. Back in September, October, November, I bought a bunch of little notes with small balances payments remaining, whether it be from 15 to 35 payments remaining. And a lot of times you say, gee, I don't know if I want to deal with that. Yeah, well, I short term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then with all this stuff going on, I'm thinking there's going to be some good opportunities out there. So I could resell those notes at a steep discount, or I could go to the homeowners and suggest to them, I sent them a letter. In this case, there were 10 letters that went out and said, hey, you guys can own your house. You owe $10,000. If you give me $8,500 in the next 30 days, I'll forgive that $1,500 and you own it. So three people raised their hand and they were just bouncing off the wall. How can I do this? That's awesome. How many letters went out? I'm sorry. I went out 10, sent out 10 letters. Right. And you didn't have to go through. So this isn't like you have to go through a servicing company or no. any of that. You're just reaching out to your borrowers, right? That's exactly right, because I try to maintain some form of communication with my borrowers over and above the service companies anyway, because I find it, it works better in the long run for me, mm -hmm. the way I do it. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense for them to do that, right? So you're giving them a break on the discount. Of course, you're making money and getting the capital that you need. Uh, did you get any negative responses? No, they didn't think it was true. <laughs> Why would somebody give us free money with no strings attached? I mean, some of them went so far as to call the servicer and say, is this guy for real? <laughs> That's awesome. So one more time, I, I was just kind of thinking of some other, a couple of different thoughts there, but so you sent out 10 letters and how many have responded so far? Three. Three. And three have done it so far. Actually, four responded. Three have done it. Three have already done it and the fourth. And then the other ones you just didn't hear from yet or? Position, so I'll let them sit. I'll probably pay them again. I'll give them a couple months, wait yeah. for things to settle out in the economy. And so, so, so far, just one letter. letter. Yeah, you want to look at one letter. Yeah, that's It was great. just a little invitation style on the little blue envelope, folded up a piece of paper into fourths and made it real personal and gave the example. The gist of it was essentially this is what you owe and how long it would take, but here's the offer. Did you name numbers or did you? I did. Sounds I like you did, yeah. I said you owe $10,000. If you pay this off by May 1st, you will owe $8,500 and I'll forgive $1,500. Some people might say, well, why are you doing that? Well, because I bought them right, you know, Kevin, when a note pays off earlier, yield goes way high. So on some of these, just by doing that, I had yields of 160%. <laughs> on those little, small, yeah, uh, yeah few little payments left. Time. Once somebody hears this, you're like, well, of course I could have done that. But I bet you there's not a whole lot of people that have ever thought about or did what you did. There's got to be a good story in there. What did you hear from some of the people that call you up? Or Actually, two of them were really unique. One gentleman lived in Pontiac, Michigan. He had a contract for deed that he was assigned to him via quit claim. He didn't even, so back in, I guess that would have been October of last year, he didn't know if he could even keep the place because the paperwork was so messy. So here he is in October. We transitioned that contract for deed into a mortgage, put his wife on it. One big strike. He loved it. And then with that, just by doing that, he prepaid a couple thousand dollars. 
And then I came back to them, to him maybe a month and a half later, if you can prepay the rest of this, we'll forgive this and you own it. So he goes from October of 19, not knowing if he even is in the house legally, till in March of 20, he owns it free and clear. I mean, what a gratifying story. <laughs> That's awesome. And he's going to give me a testimonial video. Yeah, I was just going to say, I said, man, you should get a testimonial because you could pop that in your other marketing letters, you know? Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's amazing when there's open communication, right? I mean, that's when things can get done. I mean, everybody's struggling with getting notes reperforming and people maybe not having the ability to pay because they've lost their job or something like that. You know, I've been telling people, be proactive about it. Reach out there to people. You don't want them to fall into default and then also fall into silence, right? Right. But what's unique, Kevin, so I gave a little bit of money away. Who cares? That because I got my principal back, well, I made a lot of significant return on it, I'll find another deal and more than make up for the discount that I gave away. Right. So it's a total win-win. And yeah. that's cliche-ish, but it's true. That's a great, simple, straightforward technique. I do like the extra hint you had in there where you go above and beyond the communication with your borrowers, above and beyond the servicing company. I kind of like that. Just real quick, because we're running out of time, but what do you mean by that? Expand upon that a little bit. You send like a Christmas card kind of communication no, or you send it, something it, on a... No, it's totally selfish. A lot of times I don't know if they really have insurance, so you could rely upon the servicer. So I send them a letter and ask about their insurance, and then I call them. Hmm. And we interact that way. So whether I have to get forced place or they may have already have their own declaration page and have their own, but I establish that. But at the end of it, I say, if there's ever any challenge with your mortgage, I work for the owner of this, for the company, call me. So they know me. And you, so you're establishing that relationship, that one-on-one -on -one relationship, which has lost so much in the way society works today. Yeah. It's funny, as my instructor head is thinking as you're saying that, I can almost see the hands go up in the audience of, wait a minute, don't you need a license? He's not collecting a debt, folks. He's not calling to collect a debt. He's calling to communicate and check and verification. That's all totally fine. You don't need a servicing company to do any of that. I like it and a lot. Second one, Kevin, real quick, was in South Carolina. So the lady waited a month before she responded. I said, that's okay. So I reworked the numbers and I gave her three options, three pay lines. So she went to her retirement fund and pulled the money out of that. And again, she had just remarried. So I'm able to put her husband on the D and she owns her home free and clear. No worry about anything. Wow. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, David. Where can people find you again? Capstone Capital. Help me out. Yeah, they can go to Capstone Capital USA. On there, I do have an area that says free stuff. There's a note holder's handbook. It's instructional. It's kind of like ties into what you do. And then I'll also, of course, I buy notes. So there's a page on there, a squeeze page where people have notes that they want to sell. I'd love to talk to them. Fantastic. And if you're in the Arizona area and you're not a part of his meetup, you should be. So look into that as well. David, thank you so much for taking out some time and being with us today. And Kevin, that meetup is Note Investors Forum. Note Investors Forum. That's a website? Yes. Yep. Okay. It's a meetup too. Yeah. Noteinvestorsforum.com. You got it. Correct. Thanks again, Dave. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Great stuff there from David. And he is an experienced investor and it just makes a lot of sense what what he talked about there. So different techniques in different times and I love it. Any of these techniques that you hear, you can start to implement at some point in time in your business. It'll be in your benefit, obviously. You can go to kevinshortell.com or you can go to realestatewithoutrenters.com. So I look forward to talking with you once again on another episode and I do appreciate you and stay safe and I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.